All right, so we're going to resume the, the hive inspection. Kevin and I have suited up. Uh, we've got the smoker lit with a good bunch of smoke. And like we talked about earlier in the, some of our beekeeping videos, you don't use a lot of smoke. But anytime I go in a beehive, I always do give them a couple of puffs. And we're going to be careful to not stand right in front. The bees are coming and going coming out from under this tree they're in a nice spot uh, and we don't want to stand right in front of the hive because that that really aggravates the bees and increases the beekeepers chance of getting stung they're bringing a lot of pollen in and I suspect they're bringing in some nectar as well we'll just see what we find in here so we take our we take our hive tool and uh, kind of break that loose all beekeepers need to always have your hive tool anytime you do anything in the bee yard so i always give them a little puff in the top as well just in case those bees missed the message that we were coming in so we take our hive tool the bees uh, kind of tend to naturally glue these boxes down and you can see that we have bees everywhere in this thing that's my float feeder. okay so the next piece that's going to come off is we have a floating feeder where kevin has been feeding these bees uh, with sugar water so we're going to take that off and and show them the inside of the float feeder there's a few bees in it but not a lot yeah. the neat thing about this one greg that they recommended you just uh, fill both sides and that little tray floats up and uh, keeps the bees from drowning in the water but they can still feed on it so they've done they've used it a lot this year yeah i don't see any dead bees they look great so kevin's going to set that stuff aside and the first thing that we're going to do we're in the top honey super the the, the boxes that we want the bees to put honey in are called honey supers or shallow supers. They're not as tall as the bottom boxes, which is a brood chamber. So I'm going to take my uh, hive tool and we're going to pull out a frame and we're going to see that the bees have built just a little bit of honeycomb here on this foundation, Kevin, mm -hmm. but not a lot. Mm -hmm. Now we're beginning to look for mites, varroa mites on the bees and I don't see any on that frame. Uh, we'll more than likely see the mites more in the bottom where the, where the uh, brood is. But these bees have drawn a little bit of, found, of uh, comb out on this foundation, but really not deep enough to put honey in. You can see, and it's kind of, it'd be difficult for the video to see, but you can see they've, they've drawn about a quarter of an inch of foundation yeah. out. Some of these frames, uh, I noticed in the hives, they'll fill up the center and I've been shifting them back and forth. We may have more full frames on this okay. end, I'm not sure. So I'm going to get over on this edge. And we do have a little more activity. We've got more bees on this frame of foundation. Uh, and I still don't see any Varroa mites. And you can pull that one out and give it a look. Great news. But if you're, if you're watching the video, you can see these bees are staying very calm. They, they are not offering to, to sting us and get in our face. We've got, got lots of action there, and they're drawing it out. They're going to use the rest of this fall honey flow as, uh, as we have goldenrod and asters and other fall blooming plants. The bees are going to use the fall honey flow uh, to finish drawing this comb out and maybe make a little fall honey. You can put that one back in there. Kevin's going to put the last frame in, then we're going to move this honey super off. 
Now I'm beginning to hear the bees make a little more noise, so we're gonna give them a little more smoke. And then we're gonna take this top box off. And they've really got it glued down, don't they? They do, yep. Okay, so, so it's ready to come off and be set back out of our way. But there are bees in it, so we have to always be careful and not just drop them. And again, we can see that they are just as calm as they can be. Yeah. So what I try to do, Kevin, is find one in the middle where there's not a lot of comb drawn or one somewhere mm -hmm. that I can take out and sort of set it aside. So let's pull that frame out. You got it? and give a look and see we can find our queen anywhere but that comb's not completely drawn out either but here we're seeing we're seeing comb drawn out we're seeing a little bit of stored honey there you see the stored honey right here it's very shallow uh, but the bees, the bees are continuing to draw this out. No varroa mites. That's great news. Absolutely. Looks like we've got some better action down yeah. there. Yeah. This one is going to have a lot of bees on it, this, this frame. And it's very heavy. So what do we got here, Kev? We got all stored honey and the queen has not laid any any larva in this that i see but these bees are they're putting up honey right now and on this side we don't have the honey but they're they're building the comb and putting honey up just none of it is capped let's put this one back nice frame we'll get this this one right here this will be the last one we pull out of this hive very heavy with honey and also here we're seeing where the queen has been laying uh, something's been laying this is all drone comb you see how it's uneven mm -hmm. it's not a nice smooth flat surface these bees built this kind of weird and you have drone comb here and uh, we wish we didn't have that but that's what we have so the queen could be anywhere and when you see a lot of bees you ought to always look for her. but I don't see I don't see the queen there What's the difference in the in the comb that you were mentioning? Okay, when I said drone comb, it is very uneven, and it may be hard to see on the video, but but it, it looks like little bubbles. Mm -hmm. um, regular brood comb will be just flat, and all the end of the combs will be capped flat. Kind of look a little bit more like the honey. See how the honey is capped flat? Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll find some brood in a minute that's capped and, and see. But there's a lot of bees here, and they're going to work hard this fall to, to make comb and, and fill the rest of that up. So let's go ahead and put this last frame in. Uh-huh. And then we're going to take this box off and look in the bottom one. I don't look in the bottom one every time, but I still haven't seen where the queen is laying brood, laying eggs for us like we want for bees. A little bit of a concern. So we're going to look until we find that. Boy, they have really got that glued down. 
There you go. Good job. Good job. Now this box is going to be heavy, so this just set it right down behind. Giving them a little smoke. This old comb that they built on top isn't good for anything, so we're going to cut it off. Just take your hive tool and carve it off. There's a little bit of honey in it. Um, we'll let the bees just uh, clean that up whenever they want to. We wish they didn't build that way, but they did, so. Ideally, that, that will not have happened, right? Right. There's nothing a beekeeper can do about it. The bees just wasted a little bit of energy building comb in a weird place. You got it? I have it. So here we have uh, a little bit of honey stored up in the corners. And we see pollen scattered around. See that yellow pollen, Kevin? Yes, sir. That's the same pollen that we saw the bees bringing in when we were looking on the outside of the hive. Okay. And I am still not seeing any larvae. 